Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. In this video, we'll be finishing up our look at the uh, method of virtual work for trusses, specifically applying the method of virtual work to the calculation of uh, truss deflections and deformations. So we're going to work through a long form example of finding um, vert uh, the vertical and horizontal deflection of a truss at a single point, and the calculations will become a bit tedious, but uh, that is kind of the nature of the method of virtual work. So we're going to apply uh, some unit loads to, to trusses and work through a bunch of math and do some summations and some tabular forms to uh, some tabular calculations to find uh, the vertical and horizontal deflection of a truss at a single point under a arbitrary set of loadings. Um, today, so again today, what we're going to be looking at is uh, I want to work through a sort of long form example looking at the deflection um, of trusses. And this is the truss we're going to be looking at today. So the following information is given to us. Uh, we have a truss like this. It's going to be slightly more complex than the problem we looked at last time. Actually quite a bit more complex, but we're going to use the same methods. So we're going to have a nine member truss like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a nine member truss. And I'm going to call the uh, joints A, B, C, uh, D, E, and F. Then in terms of supports, actually, let me go ahead and move these a little bit. We'll have E here and the label D here. In terms of supports, this is actually a cantilever truss. I'm going to have a pin support here and a roller support here. Um, let's see, then, in then I need some loads and dimensions on this. Well, uh, my loads are going to be relatively straightforward. I'm going to just, I'm going to have just two loads on here. I will have a 30 kip downward load and a 42 kip load uh, to the right, as shown here. Uh, so we have that. Then we'll also need our dimensions. And our dimensions will also be fairly straightforward. I'm going to stick with the theme of three, four, five triangles from last time. And uh, we'll get 12 feet, we'll have 12 feet, 12 feet, and 12 feet, and a height of 9 feet, like so. And of course, by Pythagorean theorem, uh, we then know that our, um, uh, we then know that our uh, lengths uh, for these will be, uh, let's see, that would be 15 feet. just by simple three, four, five triangles, uh, et cetera. So we have that, and what we want to do is that we want to set up a, uh, or we want to find the vertical and horizontal deflection at joint C produced by uh, this um, loading. So all of this is given, and what I want to find is the vertical and horizontal uh, deflection at joint C. So again, this is given and find uh, the vertical and horizontal deflection uh, at joint C. So, as you may recall from last time, our general relationship um, or our general method for solving for uh, deflections of trusses uh, using uh, virtual work is going to be the equation as follows. We have, um, we have a combination of values for a real system and a virtual system. So, we have uh, the general form is going to be uh, Q 
times delta p is equal to the summation of, and that is the summation of, uh, we have uh, fq, fp, fq, fp, l over ae. And this is based on ideas of uh, work and energy. And recall that we have two systems that we're going to look at. We have our uh, system P. Uh, we're going to use a subscript P as the text does. That is our real system. And this represents the actual, this represents the truss with the uh, real loads and the real deflections that this truss will experience. So again, this is the uh, truss with real loads and uh, real deflections or real displacements. And our virtual system P, or our virtual system Q. We also have a virtual system Q. And again, our virtual system uh, has a, uh, each virtual system will have a single uh, unit load applied in a certain direction. So we have a single uh, virtual load, a virtual unit load, and we're going to apply that in the direction and at the location where we're interested in finding uh, the deformation. So a single virtual load at location and direction. Uh, where de uh, deflection is desired. Or deformation is desired. So, uh, so for this particular problem, this means that we're actually going to have uh, two virtual systems. Uh, again, if you want to find the deflection, for example, at the, uh, if we want to find the horizontal deflection at joint C, we need to apply a one kip uh, virtual load to joint C with no other loads on the structure, and then find all of our internal number forces. If we want to find the vertical deflection at joint C, we need to apply a one kip load uh, on joint C, and that's the only load we'll be applying to the entire truss. And so, um, so we're actually going to, if we are, uh, since the problem is asking for the vertical and horizontal deflection at joint C, that means we're actually going to have to do two different analyses of um, our virtual system. Okay, so again, this is the equation we looked at last time. Uh, the a der full derivation of this can be found in the text, but this is based on a comb. But what we can see basically is that this is a combination of we have the uh, the virtual load Q um, going through the real deformation P is equal by energy to uh, the combined uh, energies uh, stored in um, every member under the uh, under a, uh, the forces produced by the unit load um, applied at the joint we're investigating. Okay, so that's the general setup. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, if not, I'm gonna erase this and then we can start looking at our uh, system. So um, for the sake of brevity, I am going to uh, fast forward through some of the uh, derivation well, not derivation, through some of the uh, plugging and chugging in terms of, you know, finding free body diagrams and uh, of individual joints. I trust by now, I, I trust by now that you're all pretty good at finding internal forces in trust members. Um, instead, I'm going to try to focus on the uh, virtual work uh, aspect of things. So, uh, as we mentioned, we're going to need two different uh, virtual systems. And for each one of them, we're going to have to do a full truss analysis and solve for all of the internal forces 
in every member of the trust. And uh, this is definitely some, a look at an application where something like a trust matrix analysis would shine. Because if you want to do this using, using a method of joints, then you have to go through one joint at a time, and you have to do that for every single one of your uh, locations and directions where you're interested in finding the deformation. But uh, so that is a case where uh, where a uh, where a uh, some sort of matrix method is particularly useful, especially like just, even just a simple Excel matrix or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna again, like I said, I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit, and I will say that um, uh, let's say the first thing I do is uh, find all of the uh, internal forces in the real truss. So step one, I find all my FPs. Uh, I want to find all of my FPs. Again, FPs are the uh, forces produced in each of the members by the actual loads that are on the truss. So these are the real internal member forces. So the real internal member forces, and when I go and do that, let's see here. I I just I like an idiot went and ran through all this using the method of joints. So uh, hopefully there are no errors in this, but uh, you never know. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw out the truss and label all of the uh, forces that I got. So when I did that, I ran through the method of joints and did a whole lot of uh, very tedious calculations, but that's okay. So as a reminder, on our truss, we had, on, on our real truss, we had a load of 42 kips in the horizontal direction and 30 kips downward. And I got in the top chord, uh, let's see, an F, and again, as a reminder, all of these are FPs, which represent the real loads uh, or and internal forces on the truss. And so I have, I got 122 kips, and then 82 kips in this top chord member. So this is, we have load mo moving to the right and downward. So we end up with a top chord in uh, tension and a bottom chord in compression. I got negative 50 kips in this uh, element. Um, actually, this is not drawn correctly. Sorry about that. This should be more like that. Had a mystery extra element there. And so, yes, this member here is negative 50 kips. And uh, in terms of joint labels, again, they're A, B, C, uh, D, E, and F. Okay, then I have in the bottom chord uh, negative 80 kips and uh, negative 40 kips. Then on my in my uh, in my the web of my truss, I have 152.5 kips, negative uh, 91.5, negative uh, 50, uh, 30, and that's it. So oh, and I also found the reactions. If you're curious, on negative 91.5 downward at D or 91.5 kips downward at D, 80 kips to the left here, and then at E, an upward force of uh, 121.5 kips. Uh, 121.5 kips. Okay, so again, this is nothing that we haven't done before. We have, uh, we're pretty experienced at this point of, um, finding all uh, for finding forces within trusses uh, based on applied loads. So I trust by now you're all pretty good at this. So the next thing I need to do is to define a virtual system. And like I said, we're going to have two different virtual systems, one of which is for a horizontal load and one of which is for a unit uh, is, is for a vertical load. So again, virtual systems, we apply a unit, which means a 
a, a, a load with a, with a value of one. And whatever, and you simply use whatever unit system you're working with. So um, we're, we, are, we have all of our loads here in kips, so we're going to apply a one kip load, but you could easily do this as a one pound load, a one kilonewton load, uh, a one newton load if you really wanted to. But um, again, you simply apply a unit load of, in whatever unit system you're working with. Okay. So let's look at our uh, virtual system. And the virtual system for a uh, uh, unit horizontal load on this truss. Okay, so again, if we are, uh, if we want to find the, since we want to find the horizontal and vertical deflection at joint C, we need to apply a, um, we need to have one virtual system covering a horizontal, oh, that has a horizontal uh, loaded joint, joint C, and then uh, another virtual system that has a vertical uh, unit load at joint C. So, um, let's just label this virtual system one. And again, this is with a unit horizontal load applied at joint C. So we have the, again, it's the exact same truss with all of the same um, member uh, lengths, all the same geometry, all the same supports. Literally, it's the exact same truss with no changes whatsoever. All we're changing in the virtual system is applying uh, different loads at different locations. So joint names A, B, C, uh, D, oh, that's not a joint, that's a member, uh, E and F, and uh, we're going to apply a, again, because uh, if, if for the first one, we are going to apply a unit load Q of Q equal, uh, equals one kip uh, horizontal to the right. So, um, and again, I think by now you're pretty good at solving for truss member forces. So what we're gonna do then is just work, run through the analysis and find all of our um, internal member forces. So no uh, great surprise here. So if I work through this, I get that in um, member AB, I have an, an, an FQ. And again, um, all of these were FPs. So this is like an FP equals 122 kips, an FP equals 82 kips, etc. But Q refers to the virtual system. So for AB, we got a, a Q of one kip. Uh, this one, we also got one kip. Um, and then the diagonals, I got 1.25 kips. Uh, I got compression on AE of negative 0 0.75 kips. Um, on BE, there was no force um, and no force on the rest of these members. And the same on DE and EF. Then in terms of restraining forces, I had a reaction of, uh, for dx, of one kip to the left, and uh, that was uh, 0.75 kips downward. And at e, I had a 0.75 kip uh, force upward. So again, I'm getting these simply from um, applying a uh, one kip horizontal load at the joint where I'm interested in the deflection at, and then just applying my exact, my, my same standard methods, you know, method of joints, method of sections, some sort of matrix method, whatever I want to do, and finding all of my uh, internal member forces. So again, this is, so this represents the virtual system uh, for our uh, horizontal deflection at joint C. 
Again, all of this is the virtual system. for a delta x deflection in the x direction at joint C. Okay, questions so far on the setup? Okay, so um, next I also want to just illustrate the uh, virtual system for the vertical force at, or sorry, for the uh, vertical deflection at joint C, and it's going to look very similar to this. So we can take a look at that. So we have our real system defined and we have our, uh, our first virtual system defined. But remember, because we're dealing with, because the problem statement asked for uh, both a vertical and horizontal deflection at joint C, we need to have not one, but two virtual systems. Though thankfully the uh, thankfully the uh, real system is the same in both cases. All right, so then uh, let's look at a virtual system two. And again, this is a uh, virtual system two. We will apply a uh, unit vertical load uh, a unit vertical load at joint C in order to get the deflection at joint C. Uh, in order to get the delta Y at joint C. Okay. And when I go ahead and do that, I'll get these internal number of forces as follows. So again, this is my second virtual system. Um, actually, I don't I'm not quite like the slope on that one. More like that. And these again are joints A, uh, B, C, and D, E, F. And I'm going to apply a uh, unit load at joint C. And um, even though I can realize because of the, uh, so from the original loads on the truss, uh, we have a, if we consider the original loads on the truss, we have a force to the right and a force downward. So the deflection is probably going to be downward at joint C. That is what we would expect. However, when I apply virtual loads, I usually just always assume positive virtual loads and apply them to the right and upward. So even though I know the deflection is probably going to be downward, I'm going to apply an upward uh, unit load at joint C uh, for my virtual system. And if I get a negative number, which is what I expect to happen, I will and I'll just know that the, that the deflection at joint C is actually in the downward direction. Okay, so and then if I did my math right, I can get the other, um, I have all my internal forces already calculated. And again, these are going to be Q's or FQ's specifically. All of my internal, oh, so this one kip force is a capital Q, and my F sub Qs are internal number forces. And I ran through those statics, and if I, uh, assuming I did all my calculations correctly, which you never know, is uh, I got negative 1.33 kips here. Oh, uh, I got negative uh, 2.667 here. And again, this isn't that surprising because I'm bending the four, I'm bending the truss up like this. So I would expect the top cord to be in compression and the bottom cord to be in tension. Uh, for uh, for AD, I got negative 3.33 three kips. 
And uh, then uh, AE, I got two kips. OBE, I got 1.667 kips. BF, I got negative one kip. Um, and then um, for uh, CF, I got 1.667 kips. And then finally for DE, I got 2.667. And for uh, EF, I got 1.333. And as a, again, as a reminder, all of these can be produced simply by taking your uh, unit loads, running through the equations of statics, and uh, solving for all of the internal number forces. Then, or uh, looking at statics, or looking at you know method of joints, method of sections, or uh, some sort of matrix analysis. And then in terms of reactions, although we don't need the reactions for our work energy equation, it is useful, but it is useful to have them in order to check our results. Uh, the reactions I got were uh, two kips upward at joint D and a three kip downward at uh, joint uh, E. Okay. So uh, backing up a bit, let's review uh, how far, where we are, uh, what we've, uh, how far we come, uh, how far we've come, uh, what we still need to do, etc. So, again, the method of virtual work is based on uh, or the method of virtual work for trusses anyway is based along the following equation. The method of virtual work for trusses is based on the equation, the summation of Q delta P is equal to the summation of FQ uh, times FP L over AE. So we have a combination of systems, a combination of two systems, a real system and a virtual system. The real system we had on the board, we already erased it. It's just the, it is the uh, designated by P. And so we have a deflection, a real deflection at some joint we're trying to find. And we have the summation of inter real internal member forces. Then we have a Q, which is our virtual system. And we'll have a different virtual system for each deflection that we're looking for. Um, in this case, we we're looking for two different deflections. We're looking for the vertical and horizontal deflection at joint C. And that is why we have two different virtual systems. Now, the summation on this side is um, uh, the summation on this side is uh, not. We're not actually going to need to do a summation for this particular problem, um, but um, again, we're not going to need to do a summation on this particular problem. Um, but if you had multiple, if you had like, uh, uh, let's see, uh, multiple virtual loads for some reason acting on your system, and I'm trying to think of why you might do that, but uh, Usually, you don't even think of this as a separate summation. Usually, you only think of this side as a summation. And so, we're not going to do any summation on this side. But on this summation here, what this is summing fundamentally is this is doing a member-by-member member summation. So, for member AB, we'll multiply the, uh, the virtual load in that, in that element, member AB, uh, times the real load in that element, times its length, divided by a times e and we'll sum and we'll do that for all of the members in the truss combining both the, both the real system uh, combining the values from both the real system and the virtual system uh, we'll sum all those up and then we'll be able to uh, relatively straightforward uh, to with relative ease calculate our um, uh, calculate our final deflection that corresponds to that virtual system so, the method of virtual work is, if you're, especially if you're doing it by hand, yes, it is a quite tedious process, but conceptually, it's actually not that difficult. It's just simple multiplication, you know, addition, uh, summation, that sort of thing. So, um, any questions before we continue? So um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this virtual system. And I'm going to set up a table to do some uh, summations. So let's do that.
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is a, is a little bit of algebra just to make this summation process a little bit easier in terms of calculations. So we have this equation here. However, for our particular problem, you may recall that all members are made of steel or the 29,000 KSI. I said, I said it had 29,000 KSI as the stiffness. You might guess that's probably steel or some weird material that has the exact same elastic modulus as steel. So, um, and all of them have the exact same uh, cross-sectional area, which is six square inches. So, um, because all of the elements are going to, uh, and again, this is just for our problem. For this particular problem here, because all of the areas and elastic moduli are the same for all members, I can just pull them out from this side of the equation as a constant. Uh, FQ, FP times L. So now I'll only need to uh, only need to do a summation on FQ times P times L. Again, you can only do this if all of the members are the same, are, are the same uh, geometry, not geometry, the same cross-sectional area and made of the same material. Uh, so if same material and cross-section across members uh, for all members. So again, you can only do this, uh, this factoring, this pulling out this one over AE, if all of the members have the same uh, cross-sectional area and elastic modulus. Um, if not, you'll have to include a column in your summation table uh, for area, elastic modulus, et cetera. But since, we, uh, since for this example, everything is the same area, we can treat them as just a simple constant. So I'm gonna set up a table for the horizontal uh, unit load. Now, let's see, um, horse for the horizontal unit load, or a case, uh, I'm gonna analyze the case of where we had a horizontal unit load corresponding to the horizontal deflection at joint C. And I'm gonna set up a table um, with rows that, uh, for one row for each member. So I'm gonna have a member and a column, an FP, which is going to be in kips. That is the real load in that member. I have an FQ, which is the virtual load in, the mem in that member uh, that corresponds to the uh, virtual system that for our, the, in the virtual system where we applied a unit horizontal load. And then I'm gonna have the L, the length, and make sure you use the same unit system. And we're gonna have inches. And then I'll need an FQ times FP times L, just the simple product of these uh, three items here. So I'll have member AB, uh, let's see, AB, uh, BC, uh, AD and AE. A, D, and A, E, um, B, B, E, uh, B, F, uh, then C, F, uh, D, E, C, F, uh, D, E, and E, F. And so now it's just a matter of some plugging and chugging. Um, I can uh, go back to my drawing for my real system and just simply put the corresponding uh, real loads um, that it, each member experiences. And that's uh, 122, 82, 152.5, uh, negative 91.5, negative 50, negative 50, 30, negative uh, 50, uh, negative 80 and negative 40. All right, again, these are the uh, forces produced in each member in the truss 
uh, under the real loads experienced by the truss. Okay, now the virtual loads, I'm going to have uh, the, the virtual forces Q. Again, we are dealing with the first virtual system we looked at where we have a uh, unit horizontal load applied on joint C. And we found that there were, uh, uh, in, from that unit horizontal load, we had the following forces. We had a one kip load, a one kip load, a 1.25 kip load, uh, negative 0 0.75, and the rest were zero. Now, in terms of lengths, uh, let's see, we had 144, um, 144 inches. You know, if we just go back to our original lengths, because all of our bays are, uh, all of our bays were uh, 12 feet wide, nine feet tall, and because of that, the diagonals are uh, 15 feet. And uh, let's see, so if we convert, if we get the uh, length of that, the diagonals, 15 times 12, that is 180 inches. So AD is going to be, uh, AD is going to be 180. Uh, AD, BE, and CF will be the same uh, here. So AD, uh, BE as well, 180 inches, and uh, CF will be 180 inches. And any element with a zero, we'll just have a, well, let me finish filling out the lengths first. Because so we have, uh, we have a horizontal, uh, BC is also horizontal, that's going to be 144 inches. Uh, AE is a, a vertical, that's going to be 108 inches. Uh, BF is another vertical at 108 inches. Uh, DE, that is another horizontal. At, uh, that will be 144 inches because that is 12 feet long. And EF is going to be, uh, let's see, another horizontal at 144 inches. So in terms of the forces then, um, all, if I, or not in terms of the forces, in terms of the products here, or in terms of our right column, all I need to do is multiply these three quantities. So 122 times 144, that's uh, 17,568. And the units would be a uh, basically kip squared times inches. Um, then I got 11,808 here. And I really need to do this multiplication again, but um, then I got, uh, let's see, 7,412, and then zero, 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 um, five zeros all the way down. And then, um, so AD is simply 152.5 times 1.25 uh, times 180. And uh, we get uh, 34,312.5. Uh, and now uh, we can simply, uh, so we have all of our products now. And all we need to do next is to simply, uh, to get, we need to get the summation term. And so we simply sum them up. So 17,568 plus 11,808 plus 34,312 uh, plus 7412. And I get a total of 700, or not 700, uh, 71,101. Uh, and that would have units of kip squared inches. All right, and then we simply, to find our deflection, we're, right, we're now right at the point where we can finally find a deflection. And to do that, all I have to do is apply our overall formula here. And so uh, just, a, just a, a straightforward application of the formula. We have uh, a Q of one kip and our delta P, and that equals, we pulled the one over AE out, so that's one over six inches squared uh, times 29,000. KSI times our summation, which is this 71,101 uh, kip squared times inches. And if you work through the units, 
everything cancels out and you do end up with inches. And our delta P, which is a delta P, which is our delta X at C in this case, well, that's just that divided by six times 29,000. And I get a deflection of 0 0.41 inches. And that is the deflection uh, on joint C in the horizontal direction. In other words, on the real truss, not the virtual truss, but the actual real truss, this is the amount that that joint is going to move uh, to the right, assuming no math errors, which is certainly possible. So again, as a reminder, what we've done is we've created a table that has all of our, uh, um, the results of all of our truss analysis. We had, uh, we have our real loads. This is the, uh, we, we have our, re I should say our real internal member forces. These are the forces actually experienced by each member in the truss when um, the actual loads on the truss are applied to it. Then we have our virtual column, uh, FQ, Q corresponding to the virtual system. Uh, FQ represents the internal member forces produced in each member when we apply some sort of unit uh, load at the location where we want the deformation. L, that's straightforward, that's just the length of the member, it's simple, simple uh, you either have the geometry already or you can do a Pythagorean theorem, no problem there. And the column FQ, FP, L, well, that's just a simple multiplication. And then uh, you get all of your numbers, you sum them up and you have a final value. And again, as a reminder, if we didn't have the same area and elastic moduli, I would need two other columns. I would need a column for area and I would need a column for elastic moduli if I had more than one material used. Like if you had a, for example, if you had a truss that maybe like, maybe for some reason you made some of the elements out of concrete and some of them out of steel. Uh, you might do that for certain economic or aesthetic reasons. Um, so if you were doing that, then you'd have two different, you'd have an uh, initial column for E and more commonly you might have differences in area. And so you would need a column for, for your area and you would just be, uh, you wouldn't just be multiplying, you would actually have like a divided by AE on the final term or on the final column, but the overall, the process would be the same just with two extra columns. Okay, so questions so far. I know this is uh, a lot of math, I know this is a lot of writing, but, uh, and I know this seems a bit tedious, but uh, this is the method of virtual work for uh, finding trust deformations. Any questions before we move on to the same table, but for this system? Okay. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Ah, okay. The question is, uh, where did the FP column from? Uh, where did the numbers in the FP column come from? Again, these are the, uh, when we, uh, we took the truss, and we had the actual loads applied to it, where we have the, you know, the 42 kip force, for example, and the, um, I'm trying to remember what that was exactly, and the 30 kip force. The actual truss has a 42 kip force to the right and a 36 kip force downward applied at C. And we went through, and using that real system, we found all of the forces that actually exist in that truss. So in the real world, basically, those are the forces each member will actually experience. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, the one, this one here. Okay, the forces on this diagram here, we are going to use this in, um, this corresponds to the, uh, the vertical unit load. We'll use these numbers in the next table. So, uh, so remember we had a we have two different virtual systems. We have one virtual system that is for that we applied a unit horizontal load, and we have one exactly. Yep. So we'll apply the so for our next one where we're looking for the deflection in the vertical direction, we'll use all of the internal forces from the unit vertical load. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. All right. So, oh, oh, sorry. Yes, sorry.
Ah, these were givens. Um, yeah, basically these are the area of each member and the elastic modulus, which is steel. So uh, again, if you, uh, it was given to us in the problem statement that all of the elements have the same, are made of steel or made of the same uh, material and have the same cross-sectional area. But if you had varying ones, you'd need uh, two extra columns uh, to include in the summation. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. So uh, almost done. Just need to work through another one of these tables. Um, actually, uh, does everyone have this? Do you care if I uh, uh, erase some of the, the numbers in here for brevity's sake? Okay. So I'm just going to go and change up my uh, unit loads to avoid having to write this whole table out again, just for, just for brevity's sake. And uh, my, obviously my uh, summations will change. So let's eliminate those. Gonna have a very fun table when I'm done. So let's get rid of these. And then I'll also erase all of this work down here. So we don't need to change the, uh, the P column because the real system is the real system. At the end of the day, there are only, uh, there's only one set of loads that the structure is actually experiencing in the real system. So we only need to change the virtual loads and then uh, change our uh, summation up. but I think we'll be able to get through this. So from our virtual loads here, which again is just, uh, this is the, uh, because we're now dealing with the vertical, actually I'll just go ahead and say this is the vertical now. For the case with the vertical unit loads, we'll have different, uh, we'll have the exact same real loads, but we'll have different virtual loads the ones that we produced when we did a summation of forces um, with our uh, unit loads here, with our vertical unit load. And let's see. So I get uh, these uh, forces. We have negative 2.67. Uh, let's see, negative 1.333. Uh, let's see, negative 3.333. And again, these are just taken directly from this, so like AD is negative 3.333. Uh, AE is 2, uh, 1.667, uh, negative 1, 1.667, uh, 1 2.667, and 1.333. And then we multiply these out. I get, uh, let's see, I get negative 46,848. Um, let's see, negative 15, uh, 744. I still need to do this multiplication. Um, negative, I'll come back to the, that, that one, negative 19,764, uh, BE. Um, I have, uh, that will, BE will come back to you. BF is at negative, uh, 3240. Uh, negative 3240. Uh, CE, or CF, I should say, is at, uh, well, that's another one I'll come back to. DE is negative uh, 30,720. And EF is, is negative 76,080, or 7,680. So interestingly enough, all these terms are negative. So let's go. Let me go ahead and multiply these out, these ones here out. So let's see, negative three point three 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 times one five two point five uh, times one eighty. I get a uh, negative uh, ninety one thousand five hundred. Um, multiply these out. Negative fifty times one point six 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 times one eighty. I get negative fifteen thousand and negative 50 times 1.666 times 180, I, oh, 
Um, does that come to the same thing? Actually, yes, that shouldn't surprise us. So that is negative 15,000 as well. Negative 15,000 as well. And now I simply sum all these up. So negative 46,848 minus 15,000, uh, that is 15,744, uh, sorry about that. Uh, minus 15,744 minus 91,500 minus 19,764 uh, minus 15,000 uh, minus uh, 3,240. Actually, let me check that one. That seems a bit small, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that should be, uh, I believe, 32,400. That makes a little more sense, I think. Um, 32,400. Lost a zero there. Uh, minus 15,000. Uh, minus uh, 30,700. And minus 7680. I get a summation of negative uh, 274. Uh, 636, and that would also be kip squared inches, or uh, yeah, kip squared per inch or so. Well, kip squared times inches. Now I can just simply apply my formula to say that my delta P, my actual deflection, which because we applied a unit or a vertical load, is going to be the delta Y at joint C, is going to be the summation of negative uh, 274,636 divided by A, which is my 6 inches squared, times 29,000 KSI. And then I can divide that out, 6 times 29,000, and I get a final de uh, deformation in the y direction of negative 1.58 inches. Delta Y of negative uh, 1.58 inches. So in other words, the real truss is going to be uh, ignoring the, uh, we're done with the virtual system, the real truss under the actual loads that are that are being experienced will deflect downward 1.58 inches uh, uh, under the loads that we've applied to the truss. And that is a long form example of the method of virtual work applied to trusses. So any questions? Okay. Oh, any questions? Okay. So again, I know this can be, uh, I know that was very quick. I went through quite a lot here. Um, and I know it can seem quite tedious calculation wise. Uh, but the whole idea is that um, the core idea is actually relatively simple. The calculations are, are tedious, a bit tedious at times, but that can happen in structural analysis. The, uh, we apply a, the basic process we find the real loads in our system produced by the actual, uh, the, the real forces in each member produced by the actual loads. Um, we then apply a unit load in the direction of uh, whatever deflection we're interested in and analyze the truss with that uh, unit load on it. Then we uh, simply uh, find all of our virtual forces, run through a whole bunch of tedious calculations, and in the end, we can get a single number um, for our deflection. Again, it's kind of, it can be a bit tedious because for every deflection you're interested in, you do have to apply a unit load, but uh, it is only particularly tedious when you're doing this by hand. If I want to know the deflection on all points in all directions, I would probably just do this using a matrix method in a computer, and then calculations would go quite quickly. Okay, so um, if there are no questions, I'll go ahead and let you go. I hope you all have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday, and thank you. All right, that'll do it for now. Again, as we can see, the uh, or, or as we have seen, the uh, method of virtual work for trusses can definitely be quite tedious. There's a lot of small calculations that have to be done. There's a lot of, um, we have to do, for, for example, for this system, for this problem, where we had, uh, we were only looking for just two deflections at a certain joint, but we actually had to do uh, three entire truss analyses using the method of joints, method of sections, etc., and find all of the member forces that actually occur in the truss, and then all of the member forces that occur in two different virtual systems. But uh, again, this was, if you're doing this by hand, it can be quite tedious, but if you're using a matrix method, uh, as we've looked at in previous lectures, then that's not necessarily too bad. So uh, hopefully you found this uh, enjoyable or 
well, at least maybe at least a bit informative. Uh, sorry if this went a little too quickly. I know that there was a, we were trying to get through a lot in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully there were no mathematical errors in there, but you never know. It's uh, when you're working through that many hand calculations, uh, mathematical errors are certainly possible. There might be an error here or there, but the method uh, will be sound. So um, again, uh, feel free to check my numbers. There might be some errors in there, but the uh, general method will be correct. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have any thoughts, uh, questions, comments, feel free to leave them to make the robots happy. Um, regardless, I thank, uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you found this all useful. Uh, otherwise, I uh, look forward to seeing you all in the next lecture. Look, look forward to seeing you all soon. And as always, thank you.